helper T cells. We now know that activated CD4 positive T cells become helper T cells. These cells are termed helper because they help other cells of the immune system to eliminate the pathogens. These helper T cells further consists of many subsets. In this video lecture we will discuss five main subsets of helper T cells. These helper T subsets differ from each other in Cytokines that induce their differentiation Master transcriptional regulator, which regulates the expression of cytokines produced by a particular T cell subset and Cytokines they produce and secrete Before moving further let us answer this question. Why such diverse types of helper T cells are needed by our immune system? Our body encounters diverse types of infections and infectious agents or pathogens. These pathogens vary according to the sites in the body that they invade, the cells that they target etc. For example, some pathogens such as mycobacteria are ingested by the phagocytes but they resist intracellular killing. On the other hand, parasites such as helminths are too large, and cannot be phagocytosed. So, each of these pathogen is eliminated by a different form of immune response. Helper T cells aim to fight against such diverse type of pathogens effectively. Helper T cells works by secreting cytokines which communicate with the other cells of the immune system, and activate them to eliminate the pathogens by appropriate immune response. Let's now study details of the T helper subsets. T helper type 1 cells When there is an intracellular infection such as viral or intracellular bacterial infection, the dendritic cells and the macrophages secrete interleukin-12. The dendritic cell migrates from the site of infection to a nearby lymph node, where it presents the antigen to naive CD4-positive T cell. Once antigen is recognized, the interleukin-12 induces or signals this T cell to become T helper type 1 cell. This T helper type 1 cell now starts secreting interferon gamma. Interferon gamma activates the macrophages and enhances their microbicidal activity to kill ingested bacteria. This interferon gamma also stimulates the production of antibodies that promote phagocytosis of microbes, since these antibodies act as complement proteins. Recall that complement proteins enhances phagocytosis by a process known as opsonization. Besides interferon gamma these T helper type 1 cells also produce interleukin 2 which promotes growth and differentiation of other T cells. So, here we saw that interleukin 12 induces differentiation of T helper type 1 cells and these T cells secrete interferon gamma and interleukin 2. The main function of T helper type 1 cells is to help macrophages to fight against intracellular infections. T helper type 2 cells When there is an infection by parasites, such as helminthic parasites, the cells of the innate immunity release interleukin 4. The naive T cell recognizes the antigen presented by the dendritic cell and in the presence of interleukin 4, this naive T cell differentiates into T helper type 2 cell. This cell now starts secreting interleukin 4, interleukin 5, and interleukin 13. Interleukin 4 stimulates B cells to produce IgE antibodies. Interleukin-5 activates mast cells and eosinophils. Interleukin-13 stimulates the production of mucus in the intestines. We know that size of these parasites is too much and they cannot be phagocytosed. Now let's have a look how these cytokines contribute to the elimination of these parasites. The IgE antibodies bind to the surface of parasites or in other words they coat the parasite surface. 
Mast cells and eosinophils have receptors for FC region of these antibodies. So, they bind to the FC region of the antibodies bound to the surface of parasite. These parasites are killed by granule enzymes secreted by mast cells and eosinophils. The role of mucus secreted is to promote expulsion of parasites from the gut. So, here we saw that differentiation of T helper type 2 cells is stimulated by interleukin 4, and they secrete interleukin 4, 5, and 13. The main role of T helper type 2 cells is to stimulate immunity against parasites which is mediated by eosinophils and mast cells. T helper 17 cells The designation 1 and 2 in T helper type 1 and T helper type 2 cells respectively were assigned because these were first CD4 positive T cell subsets to be distinguished. But T helper 17 cells are so named because the signature cytokine they produce is interleukin 17. Besides interleukin 17 they also produce interleukin 22. When there is an infection by fungi or by extracellular bacteria, interleukin-6 and transforming growth factor beta are produced by cells of innate immunity. The naive T cells recognize the antigens of fungi and extracellular bacteria presented by dendritic cell. Cytokines interleukin-6 and transforming growth factor beta induce this T cell to differentiate into T helper 17 cell. Interleukin-17 secreted by these cells recruit leukocytes, specifically neutrophils to the site of infection. They induce inflammation. These neutrophils help defend against these extracellular fungi and bacteria. It has been found that patients having defective gene for interleukin-17 are more susceptible to bacterial and fungal infections. Interleukin-17 and interleukin-22 also help in activating epithelial cells to produce antimicrobial peptides, that resist microbial invasion. Thus we saw that differentiation of T helper 17 subset is induced by interleukin-6 and transforming growth factor beta. T helper 17 cells secrete interleukin-17 and interleukin-22. Their main function is to help in fighting against fungal and extracellular bacterial infections. The remaining two subsets of helper T cells are recently discovered. Here we will talk about their main functions only. Regulatory T cells Formerly these cells were known as suppressor T cells. Once a pathogen or infection is eradicated or made harmless by the immune system, regulatory T cells limit the tissue damage caused by the immune response. They are so called because of their function to suppress T cell responses and limiting the immune response. Thus they are involved in preventing autoimmunity. Regulatory T cells communicate with other cells of the immune system and help them to stop their effector functions. Regulatory T cells produce transforming growth factor beta and interleukin 10, which help to inhibit inflammation and the immune response. Interleukin 10 is a potent suppressor of macrophage function. Transforming growth factor beta induces production of more regulatory T cells. So, regulatory T cells play important role in regulation of immune responses. Follicular helper T cells Follicular helper T cells secrete interleukin-21 which guide B cells to make suitable antibodies for clearing an infection. Thus, like T helper type 2 cells, these follicular T helper cells help B cells, in eradicating infections.